Welcome to The Metal Prognosis. My name is Lee. Thank you very much for joining me again. And we are looking at the new X MG30 again. But this time I'm gonna put a little bit more under the test. So first thing I wanna do is plug it into the computer and see how its interface integrates with it and see about how easy it is to load up our own IRs. So our impulse responses or cabinet uh, simulators. So that's all set up there, ready to go. And what I thought would be really cool for this video is there's a song called I Can't Save Your Life I composed with Shadows at Bay that have three different patches. It has a flange, a lead patch, and a rhythm patch. So I thought it'd be really cool to see. Um, let's dial in all those three and see how that sounds with our own custom IRs in here. Because the custom IRs I think is gonna be, hopefully, its biggest strength. It should be its biggest strength. So we'll definitely uh, put that to the test to find out. And as an ex extra little bonus, uh, I saw last time that we used this, that you can put bass through here. So why not? Let's put bass through here. So if we're dialing up all our guitars and bass 100% through this unit, let's see how uh, strong and solid a unit it is for capturing sound for doing our studio work. So this will be going directly into my mixing console. We won't do any other post editing. We'll just leave it as that and see what we can um, get out of this little bad beast here, the MG30. So let me move the cameras around. Let's plug this into the computer and let's start having some fun. All right, so now I've got everything set up, ready to go. Programs now just picked up um, the right, right modeler, and here we go. So I had a quick look about this the other night, just to see how it all set up and make sure it worked, uh, which is a main thing. So here are all our little presets here. There are heaps of presets here, and some pretty, pretty cool names here uh, as well uh, that have helped out with some of the things, but that's not what we're after. So here we have the change. So this is, looks pretty cool how it's set up. So it looks like they've got the dual rectifier there, uh, which is a lot clearer picture compared to what they had on the actual unit. And that's really cool. Uh, you've got your different, um, let me change it, there you go. So you right click on it, you can choose what type of boost or scream you want or distortion. Um, same with the amp, all different amps. But the cabs is the main one. So if we go down to user, because they're, 23 it's got standard. We go to a user. What do we get? Ah, okay, cool. So here is the the boogie they've got set up in there, uh, which is cool. It's got level, low cut, high cuts there. That's pretty sweet. So let's see if we can import our favorites. We go into documents. We go to, where, where are you hiding? Where are you hiding? Us. Ah, there you are. Uh, try 48k, tube amp, 57 and that. And boom, it's there. And what we do is, let's see if we can put in that one as well. Excellent. So, all right, so now I get out of that. So if we go user, that one. Uh, Import, nope, why aren't you going in? Don't want to export it. Ah. Update, oh, no, success that. Update, success, okay, so you need to do that button. Oh, the more you know. So there is that. And if we go here, yep, it's there, cool. Oh, you can rename it, that's handy. So you don't get stuck just with that name there. Excellent. So yeah, this is actually pretty, looks very user friendly how we've got the amp settings here what cab ir we want here um all the chain here so eq it's got oh you can go straight you can run uh go straight well I'll come back 10 band eq which i always loved using which is cool so you can get a little bit more uh, intense with it uh send a return what's this a uh, different other Thing. So we're going to need a, a phaser later on. Uh, delay, reverb. Oh, you can even move where in the chain they are. That's amazing. That's really important. So if we want, we can put the flanger before the distortion or afterwards, because that's going to make a huge difference to us. So that's really, really cool. So 
here's a very easy to implement it in and to put it in, which is really, really cool. So let's move the camera now and let's see if we can come up with the three different, oh, technically four, because we need to do one for the bass as well. So for the four patches to get this song uh, actually happening and rocking. It's exciting because that was really, really easy and straightforward, which is really what you expect from companies these days. We've been doing it long enough now where um, user-friendly interfaces are definitely needed and there shouldn't be really any excuse on why it should be any more difficult than, um, than what we've got right now. So let me reset everything up and get to the fun start and actually start playing and putting these effects together. Okay, now I've got everything set up ready to go. Uh, I just want to turn this on on camera because I found something really cool just before I uh, took it out of the computer before, which is this. You can have your own custom uh, like loading screen on there as soon as you turn it on. Now it doesn't change the performance of it, uh, uh, but I just love that they went that little extra effort to make it so the user can make it feel more like them. So they can customize it and really make it feel like them. So yeah, I thought that was just quickly worth noting and it's kind of fun. <laughs> With this is a part of the video though, I'm going to do something slightly different compared to my other videos. So, I am going to time myself to see how long it's going to take me to come up with these three patches. And I want to find that nice equal medium of not being too rushed, but also not just dragging on for way, way too long. So I'm going to set that timer to C, mainly just for also a point of, um, point of reference for conversation as well at the end of this video. So I'm going to put this in fast forward mode create these uh, three patches, or four technically, with the bass. Um, we'll do our jam, and then I'll come back and have a talk about um, them individually and go through them, and then we can have a bit of a discussion about it afterwards. So, enjoy this fast forward mode, as I'm gonna start the timer, and I got my drink here ready to go as well. Always, always helps to have a good hot drink. Helps you think, helps you be proactive. And let's start the timer. Right now. So time for a quick timeout here. I spent 11 minutes here going through this and I can't figure out on how to bring up the IRs that we loaded up before into the customs uh, area here that we did. So I'm gonna have to plug this back into the computer because um, yeah, I just don't know how to do it as an independent unit. So we'll continue on with the fast forwarding, but just to let you know that's what I'm doing because yeah, 10 minutes and I still can't figure out on how to bring up, firstly, how to bring up the IRs that we put in and how to move the um, different pedals or different um, products that, that, that it's emulating in different parts of the chain. Uh, so, but we saw how we can easily do that on the computer. So that's where I'm moving to. I'm gonna move to the computer and plug it in there again and I'll continue on my journey. So, um, back to fast forward mode.
just stop the timer because we are done with the four effects. That took just under 51 minutes. <laughs> so a lot of mucking around, going backwards and forwards and seeing how to best utilize it, how to best, just how all the different things react to um, all the different chains and where we're putting them. So now we've done that, um, let me quickly record this, then we'll come back to it and run through each individual one and have a quick little breakdown after that. So sit back, enjoy the song. I'm going to grab a jacket because it's very cold and then we'll have a chat about all the individual ones and the overall experience of this uh, afterwards. Now you've heard the jam, let's run through all the patches quickly, just individually and isolate so you can hear it. So. So the bass was pretty cool. Um, it had some decent IR cab simulators in it. It's pretty cool. The only thing uh, that I didn't like about it was I couldn't get like a dirty, grindy type of um, effect with it that I normally love with my bass. So it's not a huge negative thing because I can understand how units aren't going to be focused on that. And there are plenty of pedals I could put through before this to add to it. But as an isolated unit, uh, definitely got a nice rounded dynamic uh, bass sound here with just what was in the unit. So the, the cabinets they had here was really cool. Uh, I didn't load up my own ones with this because I actually don't have any because I normally use the Neural DSP's uh, Dark Glass uh, plug-in and that's amazing and I've never needed anything else other than that for bass. But this is really cool that um, the different bass tones and that you can get out of this. So moving right along, turn that down so I don't get a pop, let me grab the guitar and we'll quickly run through. Uh, the guitar patches that I put together. So first one is the rhythm patch. Put that back up. This is really cool putting it together. The amps 
gave a lot of different characteristics as I was running through it, which is pretty cool. But this, I wanted something a little bit more dry, a little bit more direct, a little bit more snappier. Um, and yeah, I think it did not a bad um, kind of result from it. So the advantage that we had with this one was, uh, is we weren't just trying to find a patch off to find a really cool uh, kind of distortion tone with it. Because we had a song as a foundation to work towards, I knew what type of rhythm I needed and I wanted that sharp um, type of uh, distortion to run through and not too overly saturated uh, because it was purely of the rhythm and brought back a little bit to kind of help push uh, the bass and um, the the lead melody that, that goes with the actual tune to help make sure you can hear the different notes and harmonies that were created uh, with that. So in saying that, And that's why I didn't have it too overly saturated either and kept it a little bit drier. Uh, so that turned out really well. So let's move on to the lead, which is a very, very different. A lot of delay there because I did want it to go on for a long time because in the mix um, it it fits in a lot better when I had more delay there um, the thing about this one this little patch on what I decided to do was I rolled off a lot of the bottom end to really emphasize the highs and the mids But when you hear when I start playing low, firstly, it loses a lot of body because it doesn't have those lower dynamics to really help with that. Um, it's very saturated, and I really wanted that to help with the sustain with all the notes that I was hitting and playing. Uh, so this actually turned out really, really well. And another thing I will say with this patch is, um, I got to put in the actual tempo that I needed for uh, the song. So that was really handy because I had it all running um, to clicks with the pre-recorded drums. I knew exactly it was 160 beats. And the fact that I could actually put that in, oh, I'm pointing out the actual unit, but no, because I did it on a computer. Uh, I typed it in there on the computer so it fitted in perfectly as soon as I actually started recording and doing it. There was none of that um, mashing of sounds when a lead delay is, or any type of delay, I should say, is out of sync with the actual beat of the song. So that was really cool. So moving on to uh, the phaser effect. <laughs> So what I need to do with my phaser is how I normally do it and <laughs> definitely do it for the band is I need the phaser to be after the distortion because before it, it, in the chain, it affects it differently and gives it a completely different flavor. Um, and to get the effect that I have now, 
I'm actually affecting the distortion sound. So I just got the rhythm patch that I had, took out the boost, because in the rhythm one I had a boost, um, and did I muck around? Yeah, I changed the EQ spectrums as well, just to make it a little bit more warmer with this uh, phaser. And the phasers they had on here, I think they had three, maybe four, can't remember, three or four. This one I chose had the most uh, flexibility and most options. And I really love the, the depth that this uh, phaser gives. <laughs> And once again, I got to do it to the tempo of the actual song. So that was never going to be out of whack and just popping in and out anywhere. The fact that I could set the tempo to it, so as soon as I played it, it matched up with the song really, really well. Um, so let me just do my final thoughts here while I've got everything set up and I'm nice and uh, comfy sitting here. So the one thing I didn't like is, not so much didn't like, because I could absolutely be wrong. I couldn't figure out how to swap, swap over any of the uh, different patches in the actual chain. So, and that's extremely important, especially for the last example I gave with the phaser, because I need that after the distortion, uh, not before it. Uh, and also typing in these things for, uh, to write the names is always a hell of a lot easier on the keyboard, on the computer, compared to <laughs> trying to dial in every letter uh, and every character that's actually there. So, um, yeah, bringing it up on the computer did make it a lot easier. The pictures were amazing. It, uh, just having that visualization of all the different ones and seeing it there uh, and how it repli replicated all the analog uh, attributes with all the knobs uh, and the switches made it very user friendly and easy to be able to um, gauge exactly how you want to approach it and how you want to attack it. Uh, so they definitely did really well there. Um, yeah, hopefully you can do more just in-house in here and not needing the computer. Like the computer is a great option to be able to utilize it and use it, uh, absolutely. But I also like when units can be fully independent as well. Not the end of the world, but um, yeah, it would be nice. So there we have it. There is just a quick run through of creating three different patches with your own IRs, four really, because with the base. Um, to see the effects and see how easily it can be. Uh, so I will mention this one other thing before I do my goodbyes is, um, unless I've forgotten something else that I'll jump in <laughs> afterwards, is it did take me a while to get it up onto the, uh, I think it's called QuickTone. I'm sure it's QuickTone, the interface that I brought up here. Because the only way I could get it to work um, was I had to upgrade, update the, um, fire something, can't remember what it's called, uh, on here first, so it knew to actually talk to a PC and not to a Mac. I don't think it's defaulted to Mac, but you have to upgrade its Firewire, I think it, if I remember correctly, I think it's Firewire uh, on here first. Because as soon as I tried to put it in uh, originally, uh, the other night, uh, when I was testing it out to see how it would work, it didn't pick it up. And it took me a while to, to realize I had to do the firewire first, and then after that, it did pick it up, and uh, it started talking to each other uh, really nicely. So yeah, just a little bit of a, a, a tiny hiccup to start with, but now it's actually set up and done. I don't need to do, unless there's an update on the unit, but at least I know how to do it and how to get it to talk to, <laughs> to the actual computer. So that should be the worst of it all done and dusted, and, and the rest of it should be smooth sailing uh, from here. So thank you very much for joining me on this little uh, journey in attacking the little um, new X MG30 again and to see how else and how far we can actually take it and do stuff with it. So yeah, we'll definitely will be touching it again to muck around with it more uh, and definitely keen to hear your, your thoughts on this video or this unit or anything else you had while uh, watching this video, whether uh, it really annoys you because I have annoyed a few people with uh, bass playing because they say I'm playing bass wrong. And I'm not going to disagree with them because bass isn't my primary uh, instrument. Or me being a guitarist solely, uh, primarily I should say, 
you're more than welcome to pick out all the wrong notes I did there because there was definitely wrong notes here and I do get a little bit lazy with my theory in playing these because I'm just so in tuned in trying to get the tone right that yeah I just have too much fun with it and don't think fully in that regards to theory so yeah feel free to um, have a go at me with that as well that's absolutely just and no problem at all and I really look forward to chatting with you next time so in saying that until next time Please, stay safe.